Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and today I want to talk about why I think the Sony A9 announcement, and specifically the fact that it has a global shutter, is hugely important, not only for people who spend $6,000 on a camera, but for photographers like me who like to buy less expensive gear. First, let's talk about shutters. Back in the DSLR days, all cameras had a mechanical shutter. I mean, you could go into live view and use a rolling shutter, an electronic shutter, and all electronic shutters in consumer cameras up until this Sony A9 III have been rolling shutters. And a rolling shutter, as I'll show you in this diagram that's actually made by Sony, it reads the sensor from the top to the bottom. And a global shutter, as you can see in this graphic, reads the entire sensor at the same time. So if you're making a video, you're using the electronic shutter, and if you pan and things lean, it's because each frame in that shot is being read from the top to the bottom, maybe from the bottom to the top, but not all at the same time. So as you move, the building bends, which isn't good. Or if you've ever seen a photograph of somebody swinging a baseball bat and the baseball bat bends, it's because it's a rolling shutter. Now, there's a shutter speed chart on a blog post by a guy named Dennis Mook, and I'll put that on the screen now. I've referred to this chart many times and I've seen other YouTubers refer to this chart as well. It's really a fascinating chart. Of course, this doesn't list every camera ever made, but it lists quite a few. Like the original Canon mirrorless camera, the Canon R, has a ridiculously slow readout speed of 80 milliseconds. So that camera is going to have rolling shutter like crazy. And as you go down the list, they get faster and faster. The Canon R7, which is known for having a really slow shutter, is less than half the speed of the Canon R. It's all the way down to 31.3 milliseconds. If you look at the Canon R6 II, which I'm using to make this video right now, it's the fastest non-stacked sensor with a 14 millisecond readout time. These cameras listed in red, these have what's called a stacked sensor, which reads out extra fast, but they are still rolling shutter sensors. When you get down to the Canon R3, it's 5.5 milliseconds, and I've actually borrowed a friend of mine's Canon R3 and used it for sports and I did not have to switch on the mechanical shutter. I was able to shoot a soccer match and had virtually no rolling shutter distortion. Sony A1 is even faster at 4.2 seconds. The Nikon Z9, and also not listed here, but with the same sensor, the Nikon Z8, is so fast that they did not even include a mechanical shutter. These are four milliseconds. Mechanical shutters are about three milliseconds. So if you're using even a camera as slow as the Canon R, and you switch to the mechanical shutter, you should have no rolling shutter distortion because the mechanical shutter is three milliseconds. But look at the very bottom. A global shutter is an electronic shutter, not a mechanical shutter, and it has a readout speed of zero milliseconds because it reads all at the same time. These times are how long it takes a rolling shutter to read the first line and then get all the way to the last line. So the faster, the better and zero is as fast as you can go. Looking back at the cameras that are red on the chart, all of those are pretty expensive cameras. Even the Olympus OM-1, which is a tiny micro four thirds sensor, is still $2,000. And with its speed of 7.8 milliseconds, people have found that you still see some rolling shutter distortion at that speed. Really, you need to get up to about that 5.5 of the Canon R3 to have virtually no rolling shutter distortion. Now, I'm the kind of guy who does not buy extremely expensive camera gear. I do buy a lot of camera gear, as you know if you watch the channel pretty often, but I don't buy extremely expensive camera gear. As a matter of fact, the most expensive single piece of camera gear I currently own is this Canon 100 to 500, and it's $2,899. Well, this new Sony A9 III, as you can see here from the B&H website, is a $6,000 camera body. That's without a lens. Just the body is $6,000. And while I think this Sony A9 is a huge breakthrough and it's a really, really big deal, I'm not the kind of guy who's gonna spend $6,000 on a camera body. But I still think this camera announcement and soon its release is a really big deal for photographers, even like me and perhaps you, who don't spend that much money on a single piece of camera gear. And the reason is, 
These cameras like the Canon R3 and the Sony A1 and the Nikon Z9 and the Z8 with the stack sensors that you see in red here, they're very expensive cameras. The cheapest of them is about $4,000. And I think because now there's something better than a stack sensor with this global shutter sensor, stack sensors should come down in price and be in the price range more like I like to spend on a camera. Like if they make a stack sensor camera for $2,500 that's at least as fast as the Canon R3 with the 5.5 millisecond sensor, I'll get one. I don't care if it's a Sony or a Canon or a Nikon. I'll definitely buy a stack sensor camera, 5.5 milliseconds or faster for $2,500. But until this global shutter was announced, nobody was going to sell a stack sensor camera at a reasonable price because it would cannibalize their top of the line flagship cameras. But now, and I'm sure the other camera companies will figure it out pretty soon because the, the original stack sensor was the Sony A9 one or just the A9. It was the first camera with a stack sensor and eventually the other camera companies figured it out and now everybody or virtually everybody has a camera with a stack sensor. So, by that same token, I feel like eventually everybody will come out with a global shutter camera. And at that point, the technology of the stack sensor, which does what we need it to do, it has blackout free shooting because if you use a mechanical shutter to get rid of the rolling distortion, rolling shutter distortion, it, you have a blackout. Every time that shutter closes, there's a blackout in your viewfinder. You don't want blackout. It makes it harder to follow your subject. But eventually everybody's gonna come out with a global shutter, and at that point, stacked sensors will become cheaper and they'll become more affordable for people like me and maybe you to buy a reasonably priced camera with a stack sensor. And maybe in the next four or five years, even people like me will be able to shoot blackout free in electronic shutter mode with no rolling shutter distortion. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.